In this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the approval skit application. Now, once you install approval skit within your environment, you will be presented with a model driven app. And once you open that model driven app named as business approval management, uh, you will be presented with the screen. Okay, so how this app works is like it's a model driven app. Now in this app, I've just made one change, like I've changed the header color and I've added logo. Uh, rest all is same. Uh, I have added a couple of records. I've added a couple of workflows, approval request exists. So as you see over here, it's a bit of, uh, it has a, a set of information you know, floating around. Now on the left hand side, you have homepage, approval overrides, workflows, node instance, reference data, approval instances. Here you have an area called as approval center in the bottom. And if you select other area like approval designer, here you get two sections like designer and runtime definition. And then you can navigate through various uh, stages, notes, reference data, etc. Then there is a setup section whereby you can set the company settings and system settings. So what we'll do, we'll go through each and every aspect of this model driven app. So first thing, what you need to do is uh, if you want to provision a workflow, this is a button. You just need to click on configure a workflow. So if I click here, then it will land you in a page like a canvas whereby you can actually author your workflow. Now, first step is to add a stage and you type in the name, description, specify the condition, save the value, and then you will uh, create that particular stage okay and you can even specify the name now i'm not going to go through this in this demo we will cover that in a separate video but this video is all about to getting you familiarized with the model driven app now there are sections to configure a variable see the version save the record and uh, view it in a nice visual interface so you can do a lot of drag drop activities now if I go back to home page, the second section is a link a workflow. So if I click here, it will take you to an external site. So if I click here, link a workflow, it will take you to AKMS, that's learn.microsoft.com, take you to business approvals template overview. Third button uh, or third card, which you see over here, if I click over here, it will allow you to save the basic settings. Now the basic setting involves, like this is for the you like the person who has logged into the system. So there are a couple of things which you can see over here. One is uh, approval delegate, backup delegate, enable Outlook notification out of office. So you can actually specify in your absence who will be the delegate. And if the delegate is absent, who is the backup delegate? You can specify whether you want a default notification or you don't want notification at all. You can even set out of office uh, setting and you can uh, select the work profile if it is configured and then you can specify which days do you work on and there are some public holidays calendar which gets attached to your work profile now let me go back to the home page again now here on uh, if i just scroll down you will see uh, there are two sections over here one is my submitted workflow and a received approval request so I have submitted around uh, 16 workflows. So you will see this number listed over here. So it just displays top five workflows and it will show you exactly the process name, who requested it, when it was created. Also from a received approval request perspective, like once you uh, receive some uh, a notification uh, in terms of whether it is approved or rejected so you can actually see the workflow status so there are a couple of workflow which has completed uh, one is running one is cancelled and one is in new state and you can exactly know what stage for which process and for which node this workflow is and who is the current approver for that specific line item so it gives you a nice visual interface of uh, what is the current running state and which workflow have been completed. There is a section for approval override. So whereby if there is an approval which needs an, uh, if which needs to be overridden by an admin, uh, then that entry will be presented over here. So you can navigate and then you can see what exactly has happened. Okay. Here the workflow was overridden and the override of approver was Girish. 
and override reason was provided. Under workflows, you will see all the running uh, and completed workflow instances. Okay, so these are like there are 16 workflows which has been triggered and various process versions uh, like air fare approval or product approval or those sort of things are displayed over here. And it also specifies what is the version number for that specific process as well. Then comes to uh, it comes to node instances. Again, node is also part of that workflow. So how the hierarchy works is like once you author a workflow, you have stages and then you have nodes and then you have approvers and then you have reference data. So if I go to reference data here, you will have <clears throat> all the reference data which has been used to author a workflow. Now the reference data are basically, I would say kind of like a variables. So variables which gets utilized while designing the workflow. So I'm going to cover that in a separate video, but this is just to show you where it exists. So approval instances, as you see over here, any approval you make, like, uh, and whatever might be the decision, those all information will be um, uh, seen over here. So if I see the first instance or approval instance, then here you will exactly come to know who was the approver. So Adele is the approver. What is the approver ID? and uh, what was the notification configured and which workflow instance does it belong to and what was the node through which it uh, got triggered. And if you scroll down, you can see comments, override approver, timeout counter, owner, and if there are any corresponding approval overrides or not. Coming back to approval designer, here where all the designing of the workflow happens. So I have created some designs and then I have just, uh, just kept it on hanging so as you see over here there are like various untitled designs so what happens is like if you click on new process designer then it will open that canvas interface for you to author the workflow so you can click on add a stage you can specify the name of the workflow and then you can design that workflow also you can create various variables belonging to different data type like text number date boolean or user value and you can utilize those variables within the workflow. So as you create the workflow, you will be uh, creating some components, like the components can be stages. So there are stages. So in a workflow can have multiple stages. And then within a stage, you can have a specific node activity. So node can be a manager approval, or it can be a dynamic approval. So all those sort of things. And then reference data is basically again a variable that you define while authoring the workflow and you may use some sort of if conditions so those conditions are also uh, get stored in this line item then you will have a lot of approvals so approvals can, approvals can be hard coded it can come through dynamic data or it can be uh, an assumed record like say if i say like it should go to my manager then uh, internally what happens is like my manager gets pulled from the office 365 tenant and then that manager will receive the approval notification so there are multiple ways through which you can configure the approvals runtime definition so when this approval gets run uh, then there are various runtime stages runtime nodes and runtime reference data so all this information gets uh, stored in this particular section so like this, you will see a whole bunch of information. So any action you do in the business approval management application, all these things are segregated either as stages, nodes, reference data, conditions, approvals, and all this information gets stored in the backend. Going to the third area, if I click on setup over here, here you can set up the work profile. So you can have work profile for either a department, business unit, or individual person, okay? So if I click on new, then here you can actually specify what that work profile is uh, and which holiday calendar gets applied to that particular work profile. So if I create say Queensland work profile, then uh, for all the employee working for Queensland, I can attach this work profile, okay? Uh, 
and I can even specify which day the employee works. Okay, so if say take for example my company employee works for say from Monday to Friday, I can select those option. However, if you think that some employee work just for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, then you need to create a separate work profile because that what distinguishes the work profile uh, components, and you need to create that separate exception. So like this, you can create different work profile. Uh, you will have a list of public holidays. So you can actually specify public holidays. Uh, say it can be a state holiday or a federal holiday, or it can be a specific company holiday as well. So you can specify that for that particular fiscal year or the calendar year. Uh, and then that gets attached to the calendars. You have a holiday calendar. So once you create a holiday calendar, so take for example, if I create this holiday calendar, I just specify the name and then you can attach the public holiday along with it. So if I'm creating, say, new business approval public holiday, I need to specify the name and I need to specify the date. Now, if you go to holiday calendar, so here, if I'm in this holiday calendar, I can specify various public holiday belonging to that specific calendar. So that's how the hierarchy works. Coming back to system here, you have active business approval instance logs. So anything. Uh, any power automate flows which gets executed based on your uh, action uh, you can actually go into the run history and see the url you can see the flow id uh, and which workflow instance does it connect to so these are all the i'd say nuts and bolts of how the workflow gets triggered and if there are any exception then you will see some record over here so so that's it folks this is basically business approval management mod uh, kit basically which allows you to create an approval, which is different from the out of box approval provided by Power Automate. Uh, this has a lot of complex functionality through which you can create more complex approvals suited for your organization. Thanks for watching.